Awesome. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there on Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, and I am your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. Today, we have a great guest. I am excited to have him here with us today. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co-host, Julie Mitchell. How you doing, Julie? Hey, Chief. I'm doing great. <laughs> hey, let's get this going, Julie. You mind introducing our guest? No, I don't mind at all. We are so excited about today's guest. Our friends at P&G helped us connect with him, and he is here to boost morale for our military community. He is an elite tight end for the Minnesota Vikings, and we are honored he made time to be here with us today. Please help us welcome Kyle Rudolph. Thanks for having me, Julie. I'm extremely excited to get to spend some time with you guys. We are just thrilled. And for everybody watching, drop us a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with Kyle and leave your questions to him too. You can also start a watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And remember, Chief Chats, they're every Tuesday and Thursday. Follow us on Facebook so you don't want to miss an episode. We always have big names like Kyle um, to, to join us. So let's get this going. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. We are thrilled to have you with us. Where are you coming to us from? And can you tell us a little bit about how you've been during the pandemic, everything that's been going on? Well, thanks for having me, Chief. I'm here in Minnesota. Uh, I'm actually currently in Eden Prairie, Minnesota at our old facility. Um, it used to be called Winter Park and it's now run by Lifetime Fitness. Uh, we're out here on the field. Actually got some of, some of the guys still running around doing drills. So we just did a hour long virtual camp for the men and women at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska. So, you know, the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to host football camps all over the world. Um, we were at Ramstein Air Base in Germany, um, Naval Base Coronado in San Diego. Uh, so I've been fortunate to be all over the world and all over the United States for these camps. Obviously, during the pandemic, uh, we had to adapt and adjust and we're able to bring a virtual camp to those men and women and children at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska. So we just wrapped that up. It was uh, an hour of, of drills and fundamentals, and I had a ton of fun. So what was that, what was that like being part of that virtual camp and, and using your talents to lift spirits for military kids? What does that mean to you? You know, it's, like I said, this camp uh, is always one that I look forward to having the opportunity to interact and spend time with children of military families. You know, obviously they're in a incredibly unique situation, oftentimes move all around the country, all around the world. Um, and so to be able to spend, you know, a few hours for a couple of days with them, teach them a little bit about football, but like you said, more importantly, just kind of boost morale, um, be a smiling face that sits there and hangs out with them, um, be able to, to play catch or get a picture taken with them. It's a ton of fun. And it's something, like I said, I, I always look forward to doing each and every year. And I've been very fortunate to go all across the world to do it. Um, you know, obviously this year during the pandemic, things are a little different. So, um, you know, the people at pro camps to be able to come up with a format like this that still allowed us through technology to, to have something similar. And, you know, I was able to, ch to chat with a few different young men and women through a question and answer period, uh, got to watch them do their drills that they submitted <laughs> So it, it was kind of the best thing that we could do given current situation and circumstances. That is so great. And clearly you love our men and women in uniform. I can hear the passion in your voice. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you. What words of hope and thanks can you share with service members and their families? Well, you know, I'm extremely passionate about service men and women because of, you know, my loved ones and family members that have served. And I know the sacrifices that, um, you know, the great men and women in our military make to allow people like myself to live freely in this country, to go out on Sundays and play a game that I've played since I was five years old that <laughs> millions of people tune in each and every Sunday to watch. And that wouldn't be possible without the service of the great men and women in our country in uniform. So, um, you know, whether it's these pro camps, uh, two military bases, 
Um, you know, I'm also involved with an organization called United Heroes League. Uh, there's so many things that I enjoy doing um, that are so minimal on my part, um, but make such an impact on military families, um, on current and former servicemen and women and their families that, uh, you know, I really, really enjoy it. And like I said, I, I always feel indebted to the men and women in uniform because of the sacrifices that they make. Uh, so Kyle, thank you so much for those kind words. You know, we know you're an elite athlete and clearly physical fitness is vital to your health and well-being. Can you talk to us a bit about your fitness routine and any tips for people trying to stay in shape during this pandemic? Yeah, so obviously this off season was a unique one. You know, normally for me, I'm spending the off season at our facility. Uh, we just built a new world-class facility three years ago. Uh, it provides me with every resource imaginable to make sure that I stay in peak physical condition. This year that was all shut down. Uh, I could not go to the facility. So it forced me to kind of go back to, to my roots, to what life was like for me as an athlete before I had a world-class facility, say in college or in the NFL. Um, so for me, the biggest thing that I did this off season, you know, in trying not to stray too far from what it is I do on a daily basis for a living, you know, was, you know, getting back to those fundamentals of running in the neighborhood. Uh, we had a little incline in our front yard, um, running up and down that hill, doing push-ups and sit-ups and bodyweight squats, bodyweight lunges, uh, doing things like that, that I did as a 13, 14, 15 year old before I had access to a weight room to try to put myself in great condition. Um, but then, you know, I was also fortunate, you know, as an NFL football player to have, you know, resources at home, some gym equipment, um, a machine called a tonal, which allowed me to basically do all of my exercises in a six by six area in the comfort of my own home. So, you know, I was very fortunate to be able to have something like a tonal to, to do my workouts, to build on, that gap when the facility closed and before we got our tonal when I did I went back to what would the 14 year old Kyle Rudolph do and that's run around the neighborhood uh, run up and down the hill find a park nearby do push-ups do sit-ups uh, do squats and lunges so uh, that bought me some time uh, and here we are uh, about a week away from going back to training camp and although it was a unique off season I feel as prepared and as ready as I ever have heading into training camp. Hey, Kyle, that's awesome, right? Get, get, go back to the basics, right? That'll set you, that'll build the foundation and set you straight. So before we keep going, right, I want to introduce a special guest. She's a huge fan. Her name is Senior Master Sergeant Molly Close. She's from Fort Gordon, Georgia. She's stationed at Fort Gordon, Georgia, but she's from Minnesota. Molly, floor is yours. Hi, Kyle. I'm such a big fan of yours. Man, I love my Vikings. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting uh, supporting the military. Um, I do have a couple of questions. So I'll start with one of our core values in the Air Force is excellence in all you do. And, you know, even though you're not an airman, you know, you very visibly embody that core value. You are successful, respected on and off the field. You're heavy into the community. And, you know, you're just really someone to emulate. So my question is, how do you handle the pressure of being in the spotlight to sustain such a high level of excellence when there's not a lot of room for grace to make mm -hmm. mistakes with today's culture? No, that's a great question, Molly. And, it, you know, it's one that I can thank my parents for the way they raised me. Um, it would be really hard to fake who you are in today's world. If you had to be um, somebody that you're not all the time, like you said, we're constantly in the spotlight. You, you're always worried about, um, you know, stepping out of line or making a mistake. Uh, and if you weren't a genuine person and genuine to what you did, that would be really hard. Uh, but thankfully for me, like I said, the way my parents raised me, I just am who I am. And that's what I do each and every day. And um, whether it's on the field, in the locker room, in the community, um, those core values are what make me who I am. And it's something that through good times and bad, I can always fall back on those core values uh, 
important to get me through tough times or to get me through successful times. And it always reminds you and kind of brings you back to where you need to be to be successful. So um, I think for me, like I said, I just, I fall back to the way that I was raised. I fall back to, you know, what would my mom say if I did something like this? Um, you know, how would that reflect my name, my family's name, the Minnesota Vikings organization? And those are just things that I've always tried to live by. Awesome. Thank you so much. You know, I, I think those are words that, you know, a lot of our military folks can, can relate to you and that'll resonate with them, you know, just be authentic and be genuine. Um, the second question I have is, you know, you and Jordan are avid volunteers in the community and I know many Minnesotans appreciate you giving back. Um, you know, in the Air Force, we teach our airmen to volunteer as well, get involved in the community, but to do so with something you can put your heart behind. Um, you know, one area you're particularly passionate about is the Children's Hospital. What is it about the Children's Hospital that makes that so near and dear to your heart? Uh, so for me and, and my family story, I'm the oldest of three. My younger brother is 15 months younger than me. And then we have a sister who's nine years behind us. So uh, my younger brother was born with neuroblastoma um, and was about four hours old when they found the tumor, diagnosed the tumor. And, you know, immediately rushed into emergency surgery to remove the tumor that was resting on his kidney and started chemotherapy as a newborn. So my family spent about 12 to 14 months in Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Uh, thankfully, today, my brother's 29 years old. He was able to not only beat the cancer, but um, he did it in a way where it allowed him to live a completely normal childhood. He didn't have restrictions on sports that he could play, and uh, it did, didn't affect him uh, as he grew up. And, and once he kind of realized what he went through as a newborn. So for me, the, the Children's Hospital here in Minnesota, and you know, when I spend time at University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital, I see my brother in those patients. I see my parents in the parents that we visit at the hospital. Uh, and quite honestly, I see myself in the siblings that are there and the amount of stress that these situations put on these families is great. And, you know, for my wife, Jordan and I, we've always strived to make their time at the hospital just a little bit more enjoyable, um, whether that's one day for an outpatient treatment or a hundred plus days for a bone marrow transplant. We want to make their time there not only enjoyable for the parents, but enjoyable for the siblings of the patient and most importantly for the patient. And, you know, we tell people all the time, these diseases and these illnesses, they don't discriminate and they affect children of all walks of life. And the one thing that all these kids have in common is their children and their childhood has been taken away from them once they're put in the hospital. So if we can bring a small part of their childhood to them in the hospital and for 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, a couple hours a day, distract them from the real reason why they're there. Um, not only does it put them in a better mood, uh, it certainly puts their family in a better mood, but you know, science shows when you're in a better mood, you're more likely to heal. And that's the whole reason they're there is to get better and to get healthy. Thank you for that, Kyle. That's, that's an important message. And that's really going to resonate with people who are watching, especially, you know, the, the folks back home in, in Minnesota or your home anyway, uh, where um, you're directly making an impact. Thank you so much. Uh, you had a terrific season last year. America is ready to return to normal. And, and a lot of us are counting down until when football season will kick off. How do you think the game is going to look this year? And what's it going to be like if you have to play in fanless stadiums? Uh, the game will certainly look different than anything we've seen or anything that I've played in. And uh, whether we have stadiums with no fans, stadiums with quarter capacity, half capacity, or full capacity, you know, I think the most important thing is that we're back out on the field, uh, obviously in a safe and healthy manner, um, but 
in the United States, sports are what bring us together. And, you know, in troubling times, uh, sports are what get us through that. And we've all faced a ton of adversity over the last few months dealing with the pandemic. And there's nothing that would bring us all back together more than sports. Hey, Molly, before we go, Molly, I'm going to give you uh, we got a couple minutes here. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. I can't unmute you from here. Go ahead. Unmute yourself and give some last comments to Kyle, whatever you want to say. Hey, Kyle, thanks again, you know, for coming out. Thanks for all your volunteering in the community. Um, you know, like I said before, many Minnesotans really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your very, very personal story with us. Um, I do have one last uh, quick question kind of comment. So you've been in Minnesota for 10 years, you know, Minnesota loves you, you love Minnesota. Um, you know, I just have to ask, do you concede that it is Minis that is duck, duck, gray duck and not duck, duck, goose? <laughs> No, so so I can't do that yet, but I, I will say um, having three kids born, they'll be raised here. This is home for us. I will have to have that conversation with them before they go off to college and explain to them that if they tell their college friends and roommates that aren't from Minnesota that they play Duck, Duck, Gray Duck, they will have some explaining to do. So I will have to explain to them that it's only here in Minnesota that it's called Duck, Duck, Gray Duck, but um, it's certainly been something over the years since I've learned about Duck, Duck, Gray Duck. That's been a lot of fun. And my kids will be raised playing Duck, Duck, Gray Duck. I'll take that. <laughs> hey, Kyle, that's one of the weirdest facts I've heard about Minnesota. The Isn't duck, it crazy? Duck, gray duck. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know where that came from. I'm curious up to the history of that. But hey, Kyle, thanks again for spending time with us. Big thanks to Procter & Gamble, P&G, for making this possible. I know this means a lot to the military community. We wish you all the best in your return to the NFL. Appreciate you, and so do our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members. Kyle, before we wrap up, can you remind us where to follow you online and on social media? Yeah, absolutely. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at KyleRudolph82. And uh, Chief Molly, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Julie, thank you for having me on here. It's always a pleasure to get to spend time with our service men and women. And, you know, if it's the smallest things of a 20 minute Zoom call that can impact their lives, uh, I'm all for it. And I'm just glad to have the opportunity. Thanks to Procter & Gamble. Exchange Thanks, out Kyle. on that note. Thank you. It was so great. Thank you, Kyle. Pleasure. Yeah, Good luck you. this season. Exchange out. Bye. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you.